Howdy folks and welcome back to another episode of Tyria Talk. My name is Richie and this show is all about the awesome upcoming MMO, Guild Wars 2. This is episode number 21 and today's topic is gear-based MMOs versus skill-based MMOs. That's right, we're going to be covering all of the topics related to what makes a skill-based MMO versus a gear-based MMO tick, what are the advantages, disadvantages, and what are my personal thoughts on them. So let's get into today's topic. So one of the first things we want to do is kind of define what I'm talking about here. So let's let's start with a gear-based MMO. This is typically the type of MMO uh, that a lot of people are familiar with at this point. Most of the popular MMOs kind of follow this kind of formula of a gear-based MMO. So what this means is the power level of your character is is largely determined by the, the what kind of gear you're wearing. Um, so for example, you know, games like World of Warcraft do this, Rift, um, Star Trek, uh, maybe Star Trek, I don't know Star Trek Online that well, but Star Wars The Old Republic for sure. There's a lot of other games, uh, that follow suit like this. What happens basically is you hit max level in these games and your character is still pretty bad <laughs> because a lot of the power of your character is determined by your gear. So in, in World of Warcraft, for example, what would happen to you is you start off, uh, let's say you hit max level, then you're going to have, um, gear that's just basically related to the questing that you've done for the most part. Then you're going to start to do your gear progression, right? You're going to run some five-man dungeons on normal mode, and then you're going to graduate to running some five-mans on heroic mode, and then eventually you might do some raiding, and in the raiding you can go from lo uh, looking for group, LFG uh, level, then you can go to the normal modes, and eventually the heroic level. And when you've got like the best loot you could possibly get, you basically sit around and you wait for the developers to make harder content that you can't beat unless you have that great gear. Same thing works on the PvP side in these games as well. So there's this treadmill of I, I got to constantly you know, do these certain things, whether it's daily quests or running dungeons every day or doing my weekly raiding schedule in order to keep progressing on the gear to, to remain competitive. Now, of course, skill plays a factor in these games as well. Um, you know, you, 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 but you have to combine them both. You can't just be the most skillful play, player in the world and have the worst loot in the game. But, you know, um, it, I mean, obviously you can compensate for lack of gear with being very skillful, but you kind of need both in order to, to be top in the, in, in one of these games. So that's kind of how it works. Um, in a skill based, uh, game, now, uh, players are very familiar with skill based games in general. Uh, for example, shooters, many shooters are, are purely skill based. You know, you have the same weapons as everybody else does and you jump into these, you know, PvP matches or multiplayer matches or whatever and you run around and, uh, you know, you're shooting people or, you know, doing whatever and that's skill based. MOBAs are skill based, like League of Legends, you know, those kind of things. You're all on an even playing field. It does, you know, you don't have better gear than somebody else. Your, your skill, you know, plays the biggest factor in these games. So Guild Wars 2 is going to be structured as a skill-based MMO. Now, players are very familiar with skill-based games in general, like I described, but, but putting it to an MMO flavor is what might actually surprise some people if they're, they're more used to the, the gear-based games. Um, now, let, let's describe how it's going to work in Guild Wars 2 a little bit. For, on the PvP side, it's very easy to, to see it. Like, almost immediately after you're done character creation, you can, you can teleport your character to the mists, it's called. And this is kind of like a PvP staging area where you're getting ready to either, you know, jump into a world versus world or you're jumping into uh, a competitive PvP match. You can actually go here as a PvE character just to try out different builds. Because what happens is when you go to the mists, your character gets bumped up to level 80. And you have a set of PvP gear that's this, you know, it's kind of like equal power level to everybody else. Uh, it's already, you know, given to your character, and it's level 80. And you also have all of your traits unlocked for you automatically, and all of your skills and utility skills and elite skills, you have access to all of this. So you can play around and just struct, build your character how you want to, test out different builds, and like that. And everyone can do this almost right out of character creation. I mean, there's a little bit you have to go through, but, you know, pretty much right from the beginning of the game, you can do this. And then when you jump into these competitive PvP matches, you are on the same level playing field as everybody else. Now, obviously, if you choose terrible skills, don't know what you're doing with your traits, you're going to be at a disadvantage. But in terms of your, your gear is all the same. So it's really... And when I talk about skill, it's not just, you know, your your manual dexterity. It's not just that. It's it's knowledge of your character. Okay, that's a that's a component of skill. It's your strategy, you know, uh, these conquest maps, these, you know, 
these PvP matches, uh, you know, they take strategy. Um, and teamwork, you know, is also another factor. If you're, you know, most of these things you're going to be doing are not going to be solo affairs. So, um, you know, all of that wraps into skill, and it's not really gear dependent since everyone's on the, the level playing field. So on the PvP side, it's very easy to see how Guild Wars 2 is a skill-based game. Um, on the PvE side, it's going to be similar. Now, there's going to be uh, upgrades as you're leveling up your character. For example, if you find some gear at level 5, you know, is going to be less powerful than gear you're finding at 25. And that goes all the way up to the max level of 80. But they have said, the developers have said, that at level 80, it's not going to be difficult for players to get their hands on the most powerful gear in the game from a statistical standpoint. Um, and uh, so that way, when they're trying to tackle explorable mode dungeons or some of these huge dynamic events, you know, players are going to be on a, on a relatively even playing field in terms of gear. Um, you know, the, the rewards that you get from doing, uh, you know, the dynamic events or from, you know, dungeons or, or even the PvP side, they're going to be skins to make yourself look really cool. You're going to have really cool looking armor or weapons if you tackle some of the more challenging content in the game, but it, it does not enhance your, your statistics. Um, so that's how Guild Wars 2 is going to be set up. Is It is a skill based game, like I've been saying, and I think that some people. Coming from these other uh, gear-based MMOs, might be a little bit surprised or thrown off um, by this, if they, unless they've been following the game closely. Um, so, what are what are kind of my thoughts on it? What are some of the advantages and disadvantages? Now, one thing I'd like to address uh, right up front is I've seen this in forums and I've seen this in other places that people are kind of wondering or worried about what is my incentive to play Guild Wars 2 if I can't get more powerful gear? And anyone who's played Guild Wars 1 can kind of like you know, almost chuckle at that question because they kind of know the answer. And Guild Wars One is is mostly a skill based game. I mean, I mean, it's even if it's it's even a more exaggerated version of a skill based game because uh, you got you can get to level twenty in Guild Wars One, which is max level. You can do that in a day, and just a couple minutes after hitting max level, you can purchase the best armor in the game. Uh, I mean, it's really that easy, and, and it's kind of surprising if you're coming from like a you know, a, uh, an MMO like Star Wars The Old Republic or whatever, like, what do you mean I'm max level and I've got the best armor in the game already? Why should I keep playing this game? Well, the reason why you keep playing this game is to actually play the game. Most of the game happens at that point. And this is kind of going with what a reader that's been saying, is like, Guild Wars 2, the end game is the game. It's like, well, why do you want to play? Well, do you want to explore the world? Do you want to see all the story and the lore behind the world? Do you want to, you know, get together with your friends and tackle very challenging content? Do you want to get armor that looks cooler or weapons that look cooler? Do you want to, you know, unlock, you know, different skills? Do you want to, uh, you know, PvP? Do you want, do you want to do all this? If you want to do all of that stuff, then just play the game. There's your incentive. You don't need some kind of external incentive that says, yes, that piece of gear that you're going to get is going to give you plus five more strength or dexterity or whatever the statistic is. Is that really why you're playing the game, so you can get plus two more than the previous item that you got? Or are you playing the game because it's fun and you want to hang out with your friends and because it's engaging and it's got a great story and all that kind of stuff? So that's kind of how I'll address it. It works in Guild Wars 1. If you're still not sold on it, you're still kind of skeptical, play the game and see if you still have incentive once you hit max level, and once you you know you you've uh, you maxed everything out uh, in terms of your gear, see if you still want to play after that. There's going to be people that it doesn't work for. They're, they cannot find incentive in that way, and they need to have a gear based game, and that's totally fine. They're, we got to acknowledge that there are people are, are going to want different things. Um, for many years, I've uh, you know after seven years, I've played you know World of Warcraft and raided and, and done that gear treadmill type thing, and and I loved it, and I and I still think it's it's valid and stuff like that. Um, and it's just it's just a different type of game. It's a different approach. Um, I personally am ready to try something a little bit different from my MMO. I I don't need to do a gear grind anymore. You know, it gets tiresome after a while. So um, you know, it, it's not to knock one over the other. It's just different. And there's going to be people that need that gear grind, and there's going to be people that that don't. One of the challenges a gear based system has. Let, let's talk about PvP for a minute. There there is this. Um, you know, let's say you're you're one of the top skill skilled PvP players in a gear based MMO. Meaning you're dedicated, you're hardcore, you know all the strategies, you know your class inside and out, and you have great manual dexterity, and you could just, you know, slaughter people. What happens in a gear based MMO, those people 
surprisingly enough, get the best PvP gear because they they dedicate the most time to it. They put they get the most reward from it, and then their gear just gets you know enhanced more and more. And what this does is it creates a a situation where the best players you know have the best gear and they slaughter you know the players that have lower gear even more and what happens is there's a there's a really tough barrier of entry as these games progress and go on longer and longer for someone who wants to jump into the PVP world like if you get fresh to max level you know, like in Star Wars The Old Republic you have like no expertise on your gear which is a, a a prime PVP stat for the game and you know that you're about to slog your way through a couple weeks maybe even a month or or, or two of trying to get your gear at a, at a, a, a an equal level of these other players, and you're just going to get slaughtered for a while. Because not only are you compensating for being less skilled, you know, because you might not have, have as much experience, but now you're going to get schooled because your gear is that far behind. So MMO companies that do a gear-based game, they, they struggle with with uh, this this approach a little bit in that how do we get how do we entice new players to have a rewarding experience so that we can have more people at the top end of PvP when it's such a uh, when it's such a downer to just get slaughtered all the time. So there's different ways they combat it, and you know it's not an impossible situation, but that's one of the challenges that the developers have to constantly be aware of. It, the same thing works on the PvE side. Um, you know, if you want to tackle, like, Deathwing in the last tier of Cataclysm Raiding, well, you, you can't just do that right from level 80. You have to progress through all those things that I was talking about before. You have to do dungeons, and then you have to do multiple tiers of rating, and you got to kind of catch up, and there's a long road ahead of you. And it's a problem for some guilds who might be recruiting new raiders to, to, to tackle, like, uh, you know, the heroic modes of uh, the Dragon Soul raid, but you need to find someone that's geared, or you have to get somebody that's new and you've got to wait and help them gear up themselves. And there, and MMO companies have been getting smarter about this and making it easier for people to catch up on gear on previous, you know, tiers, like the, the outdated tiers of uh, content. But it's still a, a, another thing that developers have to keep in mind. Um, another thing you have to worry about from a developer standpoint is, are we putting in or introducing any gear that kind of breaks the game or, or, or unbalances the game? You know, you might put in something like a legendary weapon or a legendary item or ultra-powerful item in one of these games, and then suddenly it runs rampant. You might put it in from a PvP perspective, but then people take that weapon and they use it in PvP, and all of a sudden it's, you know, unbalancing. Uh, so there, there's different ways that you can throw off the balance of the game in a gear-based system. Skill-based systems don't have to worry about that. On the skill-based side, one of the advantages is that you, you don't have to worry about things as much. And I kind of talked about this a little bit on the microtransactions theory talk, which is the episode before this one, where I went over, like, you know, we don't have to worry too much about what uh, ArenaNet decides to put in their in-game store, not only because you can buy it with real money and with in-game gold via the gems, but, but also because it's a, it's a skill-based game. Um, so even if they put stuff in there that boosts your experience points or even boosts the rate that you get currency uh, of different things, it could be like karma or, you know, uh, glory or something like that, it really doesn't matter all that much because, you know, it, it's not a gear-based game. And, and what I mean by that is, sure, you might be able to get max level faster or you might be able to unlock new weapon skins or different armor faster. But at the end of the day, does that really matter as much? In a gear-based system, th those things are total no-nos. I mean, imagine... You know, imagine putting in an experience boost in a new expansion for World of Warcraft or, or make it so they can get valor or honor points faster. I mean, there, there's these races in the game. You know, the first person to kill this boss or, you know, in a PvP, there's all these, you know, the, these these rankings and stuff like that. And they all depend on people getting to the max level the fastest or, or, or getting the best gear in the game faster so they can totally, you know, dominate those things. It just doesn't work. But so that's why I'm kind of not as worried as some people maybe from a microtransaction standpoint because at the end of the day, if you get a skin faster than I do or you hit level 80 faster than I do, what does that really do for you? You know, it doesn't do much. So I, I think that's another advantage of, of a skill-based system. Now, on the negative side of a skill-based system, and uh, th this is something that does, that does concern me personally, is you can't compensate for a lack of skill by getting better gear. And you might be like, well, duh. Well, but, you know, there, there's, there, there's some significance there. So, for example, in my circle of friends, I play, with, I, I play with some friends and family that actually have a ceiling to the amount of skill 
that they uh, that they that they can bring to the table that's maybe a little bit lower than your your average hardcore gamer or something like that and 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 and, and I know it's really easy on a forum or you know in an internet setting to be like well well so what learn to play noob or if you can't play then you know quit you know but but yeah that that's the internet mindset that's easier said than do when you're talking about when you're talking about real people you know you that that logic doesn't apply I'll give you some examples I have I have a friend who gets severe motion sickness playing some of these games. He loves, you know, playing video games with us, and he's a great guy, everything like that, but he gets motion sickness, so if he uses his mouse in a lot of these MMOs to actually move and turn his camera around, he gets sick, so he's got to use the keyboard for both movement and for hitting his keys, and obviously that, that limits his, his skill ceiling because of that. My father plays MMOs. He was our main tank, you know, for... for pretty much seven years of playing World of Warcraft. He's a, you know, a raider dedicating three to four nights a week to, to, to helping us do this content. But he's 65 years old, and his reflexes are a little bit slower than other people's. So do I... Do I, you know, do I want to play with my dad? Heck yeah, he's awesome. He's a great guy. But, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a skill ceiling to, to, to those type of players. And I'm sure there's thousands of other people, you know, out there that have friends or family or even themselves that have a, a, a cap to their, their skill ceiling. Um, and gear based games are actually pretty friendly to that because eventually with, pra- you know, they can keep practicing and they can keep working on getting better gear and eventually their gear helps them overcompensate for any kind of lower skill ceilings. Um, skill based systems do, do not do that. And so I am a little bit concerned in Guild Wars 2 specifically from that point of view. Um, I say a little concerned, but the, 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 the reason why I'm not extremely concerned is because it's a different type of game. We're not going to be doing three or four nights of scheduled raiding every week just to take out the next, you know, the next boss and, and everything like that. It's going to be, you know, we're going to have pl- pl- nights where we all play together. We're, you know, on our vent channel or whatever, just exploring the game, maybe getting in some, some five man explorable mode dungeons, or whatever. But even if we get into a, one of this challenging content, we get a dynamic event or an explore more dungeon and we can't finish it, you know, for the night or, or anything like that because there's some sort of skill barrier. It really, at the end of the day, doesn't mean that much because we don't need to complete that dungeon in order to c- continue to increase our gear. We're just in there to have fun. And, uh, you know, so if we didn't, um, if we didn't get a, you know, a, a new piece of cosmetic gear as a result of that night, big whoop. We can still play the game, experience the game and, in that way. So that is a concern about a skill-based system. I'm sure other people share that concern, but I think ultimately it's going to work out okay. So that, those are some things off the top of my head, advantages, disadvantages of both systems. Let me know what you think. Um, post me a question or comment in the comments field below, and uh, you know, I try to respond to as many as I can. Um, you can also reach me on uh, Google+. Twitter and Facebook. I'll put all that information in the link. I'll put it up on the screen, but I'll also put it in the information down below. Um, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. I really appreciate all the subs I've got so far, so thank you very much. And uh, that's about it for this time, and I will see you um, next time. Itchy nose. Totally itchy nose. <laughs> That's attractive.